Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at how I hooked up these two solar arrays together. This is a 800 watt array made from 200 watt panels. And that up front there is a 400 watt array with 100 watt panels. So as you can see, kind of one of the reasons why I went with this setup here with the 100 and the 200 is because the 100 watts are going to be shorter, which is going to allow for that sun to come down and hit the bottom of the 200 watt panel. Now this is set up in my driveway. So I'm limited in space on where I can park my vehicles compared to where I can soak up some sun. So I thought this would be my best case is having the 200 and the 100 watt arrays. That way I leave access to this door here and I'm only blocking this door which I do not leave my vehicle in. So combining these two arrays together, I get 1200 watts of power and it is in a small package. So let's look at how I actually put these two arrays together. So down here you can see I bought this from Amazon. It's an adjustable bracket and I've got two of them. And I just used an aluminum angle bracket across the bottom and one across the top. You can see that here, that runs along and I've screwed it directly into the panel. Now, if you are going to screw into the panel, you can see on the front side here, I've got one here. So you want to have a block of wood in behind in order to stop your bit from driving into the back of the glass. And then on the 200 watt array as well, I did the same thing with the angle brackets and then the angle bracket across each panel and top and bottom. But this one here actually bolted the different panels together. You can see one right there. So I actually screwed in the panels to each other and then also put in that aluminum angle bracket. So let's look at the math on how I actually figured out how I can connect these panels together. All right, now let's take a look at how I hook these up. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to know what the open circuit voltage of the device is you're connecting to. So this grow watt that I'm using right now has 145 volts open circuit. So I do not want to exceed that. So the voltages you see on here, these are all the voltages of what to expect when it's actually producing power not the open circuit voltage. So if we look at the back side of the panels, and this should be stated under the specifications on any website you go to, is gonna be the open circuit voltage. So the open circuit voltage of these panels here is gonna be 22.5 volts. So if we add those all together, that's gonna give me 90 volts open circuit for these four. Now, the way I'm hooking mine up, which I'm gonna explain a little bit more in detail in a minute, is I'm gonna be paralleling these two and then seriesing them together. We can look at that as series connecting two of these panels. So it's actually gonna be two. So if we get the open circuit voltage of these panels, which is gonna be 20.1 volts, and then we add 20.1 volts together, that's gonna give us 40.2 volts. So then if we add that all together, that's 130.2 volts open circuit of the array that I'm gonna build, which is below the 145 open circuit voltage of the unit. Now something also to keep in mind is that in the winter time, there is an effect that happens where you will see more voltage open circuit. So you need to keep that in mind, give yourself a buffer from that 145. Okay, now the way that I've connected these so let's take this and break it into two different sections. Let's just look at the upper section right now. So each of these panels are gonna be series connected. So what you will do is then add the voltages together. The amps actually just stay the same. You take the lowest denominator, which is gonna be 10.99 amps. So by adding all these together, we will get 76.4 volts. That's it, that's the top array with the four panels series connected. Now with the bottom array, this array has 17.1 volts and 5.85 amps. Now I want the amperage because I'm gonna be taking the lowest denominator when I series them, I want to boost the amperage up. So the way to do that is by putting these two panels in parallel together, then the volts stay the same and then the amperage doubles. So I will actually have, if I was to just take these two panels that would be 17.1 volts and then 11.7 amps by paralleling these two together. So I have these two paralleled together and then these two paralleled together and then I series connect 
to these two and then series connect to these two and then back to the device. So then I've in fact made 34.2 volts and 11.7 amps. So then we can add the voltages together because I'm gonna be series connecting through the two parallels. So that'll give me 76.4 volts and then add 34.2 volts, which gives me 110.6 volts. And then if we take that and times it by the 10.99 amps, we will be in the range of 1,215.5 watts. So this is how we are all connected. Now I have one more array to go and look at and show you, which is in the backyard. Let's go take a look at that now. Uh, before we go out and look at the backyard, there was something else I forgot to talk about that needs to be added into this lower array. So if we look at the sticker on the back of the panel, we can see here that we have a maximum fuse current of 10 amps. So if you parallel connect these panels together, if you see more than 10 amps, then you need to add a fuse on the positive wires. So this right here, I should have two fuses, one on this MC4 connector and one on this MC4 connector, because right now with paralleling these two panels together, we are actually over our 10 amp. So that means that if, let's say, this panel gets a crack in it and there's wires that are connected here, this panel can then actually feed back with these panels, feed back into this panel, which is going to create a hot spot, which could create a fire. So what the fusing is doing is if more than 10 amps is rushing through this panel, then it's going to cut the power and cut out the hazard on this panel and it's gonna cut the system too, which is gonna let you know something is wrong, but it's gonna cut power to this panel, which is a safety factor. Now, if we look at these panels here, we actually don't see a number on the back of the panel. Yeah, we don't see it on the actual sticker, but on the website, they have it uh, listed. So on the website, you can see these panels are 15 amps. So if I was running anything over 15 amps through these panels here, then I would need to fuse the uh, positive connection. So if I was to parallel connect two of these panels together, then I would need to fuse every positive connection coming out before the branch connector. So I'm going to add in one, two, and then three, four, 10 amp fuses on this system uh, moving forward. Okay, now I have another array out back. Uh, let's go look at that now. Okay, and this is my backyard array. So here I have the Kelpha panels, 100 watt, and I have five of them in series. So that's, I believe, 85.5 volts. And I'm below my 145 volts open circuit, and this is connected to a Blue Eddy. So this is constructed relatively the same way. I have the angle bracket up top here that's screwed into the panels, and then I have my brackets on the bottom here. And you can see my little snow brush that I used in the winter time when I did install this array whenever I got snow on it. So that brings me into another factor is that I need to reroute my PV cable. So currently you can see the PV cable on the ground there and that is running up underneath the deck in the house. So I wanna change that so that I actually reroute that cable. I wanna reroute that running to the back fence and then around the perimeter of the backyard uh, so that it's not in the way, nobody's gonna trip on it, and I can still cut the lawn. So in order to do that, uh, Bacteria Power actually sent me some uh, PV cable. So this is 10 gauge cable, and it's jacketed for outdoor conditions. So this is gonna work great for this application. And the dog approves. So let's go lay that out, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, I've got the cable now uh, hidden. So you can see here, I just have the two cables coming out of the ground. And all I did was just take my shovel and lift up on one side and then tuck the cable in. Now I know not to dig here. Um, I would protect the cable if you're doing more of a permanent installation, but this is just gonna kind of be temporary till we move homes and I set up a real array. But I've got it running all around the back. So I got it, again, it's just running along the fence, so I'll make sure not to hit it with the weed whacker, but it's more hidden and it's out of the way of the lawnmower. And then over here too, I uh, did it under the ground and then it comes out and goes under the deck over here. 
I used to actually have a rain barrel too hooked up for water, but then I did away with it because I realized my roof over here has uh, got asphalt shingles. So all that tar is coming off the roof into the rain barrel, which then I was watering my garden with, or Amanda was, but that uh, wasn't a great idea because of the asphalt shingles. So note to self, if anybody's doing a rain barrel, don't do it off an asphalt roof. Let's uh, make our connections here on the panel and then we're done. Strip back a little bit of cable. Oh, you can see here, so this is double sheathed. So we have the outside sheathing and then we have another uh, insulation on the inside. So it's double insulated wire, which is what you want in PV cable. And then this is tinned copper. So I can see that it's copper at the end of the strands and that is tinned for, uh, for corrosion, which is great. So now with these style here, um, that's gonna be a sleeve. So there's two different style of these and one goes inside the other and that's how they make contact. So this one here needs to be the bigger one. So this here crimper has got a little nipple on the top here. So when that goes in, it's actually gonna curl these two pieces of metal down into the wire. So I'm gonna start that in the crimper and then I'm gonna place the wire in and crimp. And that's it. Now I like to go a size smaller, and just give it a little bit of a snug and there, now that's not coming off. And then you want to take your other pieces here. So we have a bottom piece to screw together and then we have a gasket. And then we stick this in and you'll feel it click. And it clicked. And then you're going to want to put the gasket up in and then screw this bottom piece on. And you get a couple tools in the kit in order to screw these tight so that the gasket will create a watertight seal. There we go, there's my negative wire. Let's do the positive. That's going to be the smaller one. And then I like to go a little size down just to give it a little extra crimp. And there's the positive. Okay, now that I have my negative and my positive connected to the array, we're gonna head inside and check the connections. Okay, now before I connect, the wires come in here through the breaker, and I'm just checking the polarities, and it looks good. We have the positive and the negative, and we have 94.9 volts. Now, if this was wrong, you would see a negative number there. Let me reverse it. You can see I have the black on the red and we're getting a negative number. So that would be the wrong polarity. So I'm correct up to this point. I can now connect it up to the Blue Yeti. And we are good to go. Flick that breaker on. And you can see there we have power coming in. So before I let you go, uh, we're just gonna check what the voltage drop is gonna be on that PV cable I just ran. So it's 10 gauge copper. I had 100 feet, plus I had an additional 40 feet already connected into the house. So that's gonna be 140 feet. We have copper wire, 10 gauge, 140 feet. Uh, the volts on, the rated volts on the back of the panel is 85.5, and the amps is 5.85. So we can expect to see a voltage drop of 1.9. So that's not too bad, 1.9% which equals out to 83.86 or 83.87 volts. So that's pretty good for voltage drop. Now, if I was using a smaller gauge wire, like let's say 
I went to go with 12 gauge. Then you can see we have 3% voltage drop. So it's, sometimes it's good, even though you don't need it for current, sometimes it's good for voltage drop if you keep your conductors a little thicker. So it's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm going to leave links in the description for everything I've used in the video. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Bye.